Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Project X AMA. That's the Project X Ask Me Anything. Today's theme is Ask Us or Ask Me or Ask Tim Anything about episodes four and five. Or no, I one, feel like that's a little bit deceiving, though. We call it a Ask Me Anything, but we specifically but, say there's a but. There's always a but. <laughs> only ask, ask us anything, about but. things. Ask because us AMA, about things in these episodes. <laughs> AMA sounds better than AMA B E four five six, you know, because that's that that's what the acronym would have to be. Ask me anything yep. about episodes five and six. But guys, try and keep it there, and the rest of them will try and answer uh, as we have been when we uh, get to them in Facebook. So welcome everybody. This is now our third AMA that we had. My name is Bradley Sutton. I'm the director of training here at Helium Ten. I'm joined by Tim Jordan from Private Label Legion. What's up? You got a nice uh. A nice microphone there today. Good setup. Is that a sticker on the wall? Yes. See, everybody thinks it's like, it's so weird. They think it looks like a, a digital logo hanging there, but it's not. So I'm trying to fix my white balance. See, what people don't realize is the, the paint color here is like a little bit khaki colored in my office. So everybody calls me yellow, like Anthony always calls yeah. me yellow. So I try to adjust it. Watch. No, not helping. Pretty. Yeah, like I'm the one who's half Filipino. There. But there we but go. I look is white that better? somehow. Anthony, is that better for you? Now you're completely yellow. <laughs> Let's see. I'm trying to find All right, good... guys. How's there everybody? Go. How's everybody doing? Where are you guys uh, calling from? Let us know in the comments right there. Let me just throw out some quick, some quick ones. We've got uh, Yasmin. What's up? Hey, we got Nina in the house. How's it going? Sweet three one zero. I'm not sure if that means you're from LA with the three one zero area code, but you got an Atlanta hat on. What's up? Uh, we've got Jacob in the house. Roslyn. We got Barbara. What is up? Can Greetings and salutations from Canada, eh? I feel like he was saying that so politely. Yes, and indeed, uh, I guess it's different. I don't know why. When I think of somebody doing polite, I don't know why I automatically go to a British accent. Just, and that was like the worst British accent yeah. ever. It was definitely not Canadian. Okay, so 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 sweet three ten <laughs> is a three one zero area code from L A. And he's got an Atlanta Braves hat on, and he's from that's London. not Atlanta. That's like the old, the throwback jersey of Atlanta. Oh, is I'm it? Positive. I'm almost positive. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Jim says you're confusing us by switching sides. All right, my bad. All right, uh, real quick, you guys have been. Uh, we're gonna try and get to as many questions, and we're gonna try and keep them to 30 seconds or less, so we can keep them all up to date. We actually got a submission of a question by somebody who visited here in the office, and I wasn't around. Obviously, Tim is not here at the office, so I'm gonna throw that one up for now, and that'll be our first question. Um, so guys, make sure to, to keep uh, giving us your questions about the episodes and where we have a running total on it. Or of course you can give your episodes right here live. So let's go ahead and go into this first, uh, question now. If, if I could, what I would like to ask right now, and maybe you can answer this question for me guys, is that when I have 11 items, right? And you know, to try to test the PPC, instead of spending the four or $500, would you, would you say it'd be better for me to vet the product, re-verify everything, go through all my keywords, make sure I'm doing all the research over and over, or would you still recommend for me to buy them, list them, and retest a third verification that way? Because that's about $500 that we could put towards either pay-per-click or promotional ads. So I'd love an answer for that question. All right, look at this modern technology. I'm like a, so a, good. a movie producer right now, We're clicking these buttons and stuff. So, <laughs> so uh, Tim, uh, you, you do the the fancy side on the answer to that question. I, I did all the hard work here. You, you <laughs> all right. So, in the in, in the perfect world, yes, all you would just validate and not have to test. But when you're talking about validation, we have very limited amount of data that we can validate. So even as awesome as Helium 10 search volume estimators are, they're not exact numbers, right? It's an advanced algorithm, but it's not perfect. If we knew the exact numbers, we wouldn't have to test it. Also, there's no other way to check the cost per click, the competitiveness. Remember, we were looking at those screenshots of the different CPC reports we did. Amazon was suggesting a bid from 50 cents to a dollar, and our actual cost per click was like a buck 60, right? So in the perfect world, yes, we would just validate without testing, but because we don't know, things aren't absolutely sure and things aren't definitely set in stone. We have to use this extra set of validation. Now, what's great is I don't think of it as, oh, what a giant pain in the butt to have to do this. I think, hey, nobody else is getting this information. And most of my competitors, most of the 99% of the people that want to be Amazon sellers are too lazy to do this. When I go this extra step, 
then I'm the one that's excelling my business and, and propelling it in a way that nobody else is willing to do. So use it as an advantage. Don't think of it as, as a hassle. But the shorter answer is we don't really have much of a better option right now. So that's just why we do it. All right. So Tim, so far is zero for one on sticking to thirty seconds or less. But we'll, we'll try. We'll try and get back. We'll try. I and think get I just back. got shocked by my earbuds. Yeah, uh, I, I sent a, a like a, a four, you know, a Pal Emperor Palpatine, <laughs> like a, like one of those shock collars, and I go over. Yeah, you think my earbuds shocked me? Thirty seconds. That that meant thirty seconds. All right. All right. Next question is from Patrick. This is from the uh, Facebook group, and he was saying, "Hey, in in episode five, when you did the egg holder." The, was that only to check keyword indexing uh, when you did FBM? How long do we need to wait till we can check the keywords in Helium 10? Once you actually upload the listing, it's it's like sometimes within two to three minutes. Now, if it's a brand, brand new listing, you might want to just you know do that maybe in the nighttime and then in the morning, uh, go ahead and run index checker. But if you're just making changes to an existing listing, I actually just tested this last, last week and this wasn't even on a brand registered account. Actually, it might have been on the Project X account. I was able to change uh, things right away and index checker was showing that the new keywords I added like two minutes after were already indexed by Amazon. So it looks like lately they, they've improved how they uh, index. But uh, thank you for that question. That was uh, Patrick. So I'm going to try and go back and forth. Let's go back and forth between the um, live and the other questions. So let's see. Jacob's in class. How, how, how does that work, Jacob? Like, are, do you have your your AirPods on or something and, you, and your instructor is, uh, or your, your professor is, is doing a lecture and, and you're there listening to project X. Oh my goodness. We're, we're not, to, we're not to blame if you fail the class. All right. Because they catch you. All right. Eric from Miami beach. What's up, Eric? Uh, we got Nina from Largo, Florida. Uh, we got Bobas from Poland. What's up, Bobas? Pete. Subscribe 10 minutes ago. So do you mean subscribe to Helium 10 or do you subscribe to Project X? All right. If you just subscribe to Project X, um, make sure to watch the other episodes first. You might you might be a little bit lost in this episode. We got Rose from Brisbane. You ever been there? I know you've been to Australia a few times, uh, Tim. I have. All right, cool. Nice. Good job <laughs> pronouncing it too. Everybody says yeah. Brisbane. Brisbane. No, it's Brisbane. Brisbane. It's, Louvre. it's Louvre. Australian for beer. That's Foster's. Era. Yeah, and it's not even Australian. <laughs> Roslyn, we're sorry. I know Roslyn's watching this, and she, she we hates got Belize I in the house. Hey, hey, Tim, Marco, Polo. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, look Nailed at that. Nailed it. Mic drop. Oh, all right. No, don't drop your microphone. It's a good one. It's on it. It's on it. Like I try to drop it, it just floats. It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't do anything. All right. Hello, everybody from Portugal. Kim Nguyen from Vancouver, A. Hey, we got Mike from Orlando. Hey, Mike, how come you never come to my meetups? I always do meetups in Orlando. You got to come by. Um, here we go. First question um, is we're going to push to the side, just but I'm going to use this as an example of wait for the later episodes. Scott says, how many times does a specific keyword need to appear in your listing? This is what we did in the last episodes was not like what's the recommended thing because we just put it once. We're going to get into listing optimization in a future episode. I think that's going to be like nine or 10. So stay tuned, Scott. All right. I'm trying to, I'm trying to find a question here. Oh, yep. Yep. I got it right with Jacob. Jacob uh, has uh, the AirPods on right now. All right. Well, uh, I'll write you a note that says you're allowed to do that. Uh, from your <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and uh, get back to the questions here that we got in the meantime. This one is going to be from, let's see, Toby. Toby, you just did one, but it's not for episode four or five. Okay, this is from Steve. Uh, Steve says, did you just make up a random UPC code for the test or did you already purchase a UPC for this product? Steve from YouTube. Uh, this was from episode four. I think so. He must be talking about when we first set up the test listings. So was that one you had purchased from one of those websites, right? Yeah. So should we go ahead and just get into that whole conundrum of UPCs? Oh, yeah. Some people were asking about uh, the show notes, uh, I believe. You know, we talked about some different websites that that people could use. So that I'm sure I'm going to get to that question later. So we might as well lump, lump, lump those, all, those questions into one here. All right. So let me start off by saying especially for tests, you don't necessarily have to use a UPC. You can also uh, apply for what's called GTIN exemption. Um, there's there's more than one way to do this, more than one way to skin a cat. Now, when it comes specifically to U, uh, UPC codes, Amazon requires you to use an actual GS1 barcode, okay? 
And GS1 is like the all, and this is going to be more than 30 seconds, but there are so many questions. We're just going to do it. GS1 is like the, the wizard of barcodes, right? They're like the barcode czar. And what they do is they issue these barcodes that can be extremely expensive. It used to be that, um, like I, I've got a guy, he may be listening, a guy that invented one thing that he wanted to sell at Lowe's. And I said, okay, you have to have a GS1 barcode. This is back in like 2005. He goes to GS1, they say, cool, you've got to buy this bundle of 10,000 barcodes. And all 10,000 of those were assigned to his company or to you know his ownership by like the first three digits or something like that. He only needed one. So he has 9,999 GS1 barcodes and he's not doing anything with them. So these companies like buyabarcode.com and BD, uh, speedybarcode.com started buying up those excess barcodes and redistributing them. So what I've always done in the past is use like speedybarcodes.com or buyabarcode.com and I'll buy two or 3,000 of them and just throw them in there and use them. Now, are they GS1 barcodes? Absolutely. Now, where we were getting a lot of questions, a lot of people asking us and, and really critiquing us or criticizing or, or arguing with, with what we've done, let me say this. For one thing, Amazon changes what they do all the time. So don't take this as gospel truth because tomorrow we could wake up and Amazon's change their terms of service. Also, Amazon contradicts itself in a lot of places. The right hand never knows what the left hand is doing, right? So a uh, customer service rep may send, I know I was trying to see right or left and mirror image. A customer service rep may tell you something that doesn't mean that Am that's actually Amazon's policy. So the way I've always understood it is Amazon doesn't care who that original brand was registered to because it doesn't matter. Like it's never mattered. I've always just used GS1 barcodes, has not mattered. Now one person came back in and said, hey, speedy barcodes, these aren't GS1 barcodes. And then we went in and I'm talking like on the back end, the Helium 10 office, like what is this guy talking about? Research it. They absolutely are GS1 barcodes. They were just surplus barcodes. Someone else sent a screenshot, uh, Brad, I was looking at this morning that said, like a customer rep had said, their brand name had been changed in their Amazon account because the barcode was assigned to a different brand or something. Mm. I honestly can't answer that because I've never seen that happen before. I've never seen yeah. Amazon actually yeah. going to the GS1 database and seeing what brand is located to. GS1 allows transfers. That's what I do know. GS1 allows transfers. So speedy barcodes, buybarcode.com actually have permission from GS1 and our credential through GS1 to redistribute these. So for all intents and purposes, if you need a barcode, my opinion is still you're good. Now you can go to gs1.org or.com. I can't remember and buy a barcode, but it's stupid expensive. The reason I haven't done that is I use a lot of test listings and I'm throwing these things away and they need to be disposable. So a lot of different ways you can do this. If you want to go to GS1 and buy a barcode that's originally branded to your name, that's okay. But if you buy a bundle, remember, you're going to have a bunch of different brand names on Amazon. So it doesn't really matter. You know, just like Gee's Chicken Coop and Manny's Mysterious Oddities and Irvine Axes. Like those are just made up names. They're not going to match even if we bought it anyways. So short answer is maybe for testing, you use the GTIN exemption instead. Um, a little bit lengthier answer is even buying from those websites, they are GS1 barcodes. Um, don't buy barcodes off of eBay. A lot of those are just fake and they're garbage and there's no way for you to know. And I've never seen a situation where Amazon had a problem with those uh, surplus GS1 barcodes, except for one screenshot from a customer, from an Amazon rep that someone shared to Helium 10 here recently. So who knows? We could wake up tomorrow and it changes, but so far that's my stance on it. And that's what I've been All doing right. for years. All right. So, uh, I allowed that long one because there's about seven or eight questions on that. So that all combines total time was like four minutes and that equals 30 seconds per one. So hopefully that answers your guys' questions on that. Uh, we got a question here that uh, I believe was about episode five from Marco Polo. Is there a certain number of impressions uh, and cost per click you'd like to see for a keyword when looking at the PPC report? So what Marco is talking about here is, is that test PPC that we did. Um, like, what are we looking for? So like, do you have a target uh, on that, Tim? Uh, not necessarily a hard target, but I will say this, I'm not going to launch a product that I have to rely on more than about four or five keywords. If there's 10 keywords I can sell, great. 15 keywords that are getting some search volume, great. I'm only going to launch it based on a minimum of about, uh, two to 4,000, maybe across three or four keywords. So I want the impression and that's a month. So if I run a test for two weeks and over my top four keywords, I get a total of 2000 impressions in two weeks. That means it should be 4,000 in a month. And that's good. Assuming there's not a bunch of competitive products that are the same, right? This is yeah. assuming that, like this is something weird and random. All right. Yes. Uh, excellent point. 
Um, I see a couple of questions. Somebody asking about LLC, and that those are uh, not about this episode. Uh, we got we got Jeff Bezos on the, on the line. Says, "Could j- good job, guys. Keep making me rich." So happy happy to help, Jeff. Uh, You're thank welcome, you Uncle that. Jeffy. <laughs> um, all right. Keep sending pictures to your fiance or <laughs> what happened there. I don't know. That was we we're doing so. Guys, make sure to check out our weekly news. Uh, that's not in the news. Uh, the pictures, but we got some <laughs> cool weekly news coming out today in uh helium 10 so our youtube channel those of you who are subscribed here uh we're gonna start bringing you guys like little updates that have to do with with amazon so make sure to check that out right here in the youtube channel there's a couple of very important things that are happening that we brought out now this is a similar question to the last one but a little bit different take on it this is from luis says well, uh, what's your thought process on determining if cpc for a specific keyword is worth it or not for example paying a dollar for a click on a keyword with a search volume versus one with 300 searches it's not necessarily we don't really have a target for CPC necessarily. I mean, it was great that the tests that we did came out to like 30 cents and 40 cents and 50 cents. That's pretty cool. But like, let's say you have like a $40 product and the, the and, and then you know it's a really important keyword. If your cost per click is $2, I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, as long as you know you you have uh you have good click-through rate and, and good uh, conversion rate, right? Later on. The, the more important thing that I'm looking for, um, or one of the important things, not it is important to look at the, the rate so you have an idea um, how much you're going to spend on PPC for these conversions. But just the fact that there's clicks at all, like what you don't want to see um, is you have like 30,000 impressions in one click. All right. Because what does that mean? That means that maybe uh, there's not that much demand for your product. Now, the listing wasn't great. All right. So it's, it's, it's good or it's it's understandable if you get a lot of clicks and no sales. We wanted that, right? We, because once they see the listing, they see it kind of doesn't make sense and the images are not great and the price is super high. Well, we don't want it. So we just got the click. But if you can't even get a click from your thumbnail, uh, you know, like like if, if we weren't getting clicks on that egg tray, that means that people really don't want wooden egg trays if they're searching for egg tray. And then that might make us think differently. So great question, Luis. Um, Jacob is actually in his Spanish class learning about the subjunctive. <laughs> All right, yeah. I think this is uh, un poquito más interesante. ¿Verdad, Jacob? Jacob? All right. Um, <laughs> Giovanni, uh, we actually did we actually, <laughs> we actually uh, did all of the um, setting up the ads and the test listing. We, we took it step by step. I believe that was episode five, right? Yeah. Yeah. Four? Yeah. Oh, three. Dude, they've all blended. I yeah. said three, but I don't know. Episode three, I think we set up the Tesla scene. I think we set up the actual ad in episode four. So yeah, yeah you're right. That sounds right. So make sure to uh, check that back up, uh, Giovanni. Um, here we go. Ramona says, in raising the price for your test products, if a buyer still purchases, you honor that order, correct? Well, yeah. I mean, especially if you have FBA, the the, the product is already there. Tim, we're not going to say what you did on, on one of these things, right? Because should, no. <laughs> All right. Yeah. T- Tim. Tim might have made a little boo boo uh, on one of these, but the I don't of- know if it was a boo boo. <laughs> Why you got to bring this up? Hey, I I totally forgot about that until she mentioned that, and then made me think one of day. It. One day we're going to have a Tim and Bradley tell all. Yeah, Tim and Bradley tell all about this. But yes, rule of thumb. I mean, you don't want your account shut down. And then, okay, yeah, yeah I got to click in an order, so I'm not going to ship this product. You absolutely, if you're doing fulfilled by merchant, you can still do the test. But remember, we said it's better to do it FBA so you can really have uh, apples to apples comparison about how it might be. But yes, absolutely, you got to fulfill those orders or else your account's going to get shut down. Yeah. And no, that that didn't happen to us. Our, we, we Tim, Tim's boo boo had nothing to do with our, uh, at that level. Um, Let's see. Aaron says, why was there no mention of patent checks prior to proceeding with sourcing? There's actually no mention of about 17 other, you know, things that that could be done. Now, it's very it's a lot of these things are important. And as we mentioned, we don't go into too much detail. Remember, guys, if you want to have like nitty gritty detail, I mean, the entire series of Project X is only going to be about like 13, 14 hours. We've got about 50 uh, to 60 hours of in detail training in freedom, the freedom ticket program. So as we said, like, guys, for the nitty gritty stuff, absolutely go to freedom ticket for the rest of that we got some uh, modules and we got p- people like uh, rich goldstein um who who's going to speak at the summit um in february that tim will talk about later he's a good friend and, and he's a patent attorney helps amazon sellers very important step of the process 
Nikita is asking about 3D printed products. Uh, we're not going to talk. That's not about the episode, so I'm going to skip that for later. No, can I? Can I? Can I have 20 seconds to that? You can have 20 seconds. All right. If you're looking for something that's unique and you can't find it and you want to test it, there are people that are doing 3D printing and you can get on Fiverr or Upwork. Oh my gosh, Bradley, put the hat back on. Did you see your hair? Was it? Well, that, Sonic, that's wear a hat. Like Sonic the Hedgehog with a balding spot in the middle. Gosh. I don't have a balding Anyways, spot. The way so, so I know people in the key to that um, use like Fiverr or Upwork and they got a rendering done, like a CAD rendering of a product that didn't exist. They printed five or 10 of them and tested them that way. And it's genius. It is absolutely genius way to test a product that does not exist yet. Do it. Cool, cool. All right. Um, Charlotte is asking about when you choose a brand name, wouldn't you want to do some research up front? Yes, that's an, another step that, you know, we were just doing some samples right there. We weren't like trying to build a brand. But if you're once you got your regular product, you absolutely want to to make sure that it's not some trademarked word. Um, especially yeah. if you're, you're planning to build out your brand later. Absolutely. And especially for test listings, we're just coming up with any names. We don't have to stick with those names long term. So we're not that worried about if it's trademarkable. We'll just Google it to make sure it's not already trademarked. Super simple. Okay. This was about a previous episode. We'll, we'll go ahead and talk about this briefly. It's about uh, why are Pinterest and Etsy uh, light years ahead of Amazon? Because especially Pinterest is telling people what you want, but it takes a while for for the makers and the brands to actually show what they have. All right. Amazon is what's available. Places like Pinterest and Google and search engines, even Etsy are what people want. And Etsy is a combination of a search engine and a sales platform because people are searching and they'll give results, but it's faster. Like people are quicker to market. I think it's about 18 month delay just based on my experience of doing this for five or six years. I've seen stuff pop up on Etsy 16, 18 months before it even shows up on Amazon. So, you know, it's not an exact science and some things will be faster or slower, but I definitely see it Etsy as being more proactive because it's more of like the hands on quick, like quicker to the game, like faster to market type of entrepreneur than like your little bit slower reactionary Amazon entrepreneurs generally. Okay. Excellent. Uh, question from YouTube from episode five. This is from Dale Bailey. Great video today. Each one seems better than the one before. Thank you. Question. How accurate will the data be two to three months later when selling quantities of product when when you're going to sell the, the product arriving at Amazon from manufacturer? So, you know, it's not going to be exact. Uh, I mean, what what if other competitors have jumped on, you know, in, in two to three months, you know, there's things that might have changed, but it's going to give you a much better idea as, uh, as if you're, uh, as opposed to just going in blind. So even though your test yeah. listing might be four, six, eight, 12 weeks, you know, before the product, you're in a much, much better spot than if you just went in blind and said, you know, cross your fingers. As long as your product isn't seasonal or heavily dependent on Q4, you can look and see if we think it's going to be a flash in the pan. Remember the burrito blankets? We looked at Alibaba and of course we proved it right. It blew up. But then remember we were looking at the sales graphs over the past three years of the coffin box. Mm -hmm. It was consistent for three years. So what are the chances that someone else is going to pop up there in the next three months after we sell it? Right? So mm -hmm. as long as we're picking something that's not showing saturation, it shouldn't really, it shouldn't really change that much unless it's seasonal or Q4. All right. This is from Katarina says, I think this is, Katerina. No, e e Katerina with an E. Interesting. All right. Uh, great episode today. This is for episode uh, five, and this is from uh, YouTube. How long do we have to run our test campaign to get consistent data for a decision? And question two, uh, what would be the CPC value showing that we are in a highly competitive niche? So... Typically, I like two weeks. I like to get through two weekends, two week cycles. It's a really good average. And also, Amazon takes a little bit of time to index your ads, right? Like they have to index and check relevancy for your ads before they really start running. So two weeks is kind of the sweet spot for me. For cost per click, most general categories, I'm comfortable if it's 80 cents to a buck 20. But we're not always looking at, a, at a, an actual cost. We're looking at anomalies. So if five of my keywords are a dollar. And one of my keywords, like let's say the most competitive keyword that I'm interested in is $2. That's just good information to know because I'm going to know, hey, I can't rely on that keyword. So if I remove that keyword from my list, what's my search volume on the other keyword? So I'm looking for like differences, which one's high, which one's low. There are like supplements and health and beauty where an acceptable cost per click is $5, $6. And people that sell in that category don't mind paying that because they know that they're going to get so many organic sales if they can get on page one or two that their A cost is going to be 
15 or 20 percent, right? So there's not a definite number. We're just looking for things that might freak us out. And in most categories, we're just making sure we're in the 80 cents to a buck 50 range, somewhere like that. I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to find the Academy Awards music on my phone and then start playing the music when you, when either of us are talking too long, so you know it's time to get off the stage, you know, like they do. All right. Cause we, we got to get through. We got some great, I mean, I, I, honestly, I'm looking through the live questions and the ones these, Week three, these are the best questions that we've we've gotten so far. So you guys are 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 really crushing it. I love it. That sh the the quite when I say great questions, it's because it shows that you guys are actually paying attention to the episodes, and I, I love that. It pumps me up. Uh, Mahmoud says I created a test list and I couldn't check indexing. Should we wait till Amazon receives the item? So if 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 that's a trouble to you, that is absolutely something you could do. You could just uh, make a, you know, convert it to a fulfilled by merchant or add another SKU that's fulfilled by merchant, put one in inventory and like two minutes later, uh, just check the indexing and then, and then take it out. So that's easy. Um, let's see. Hakkasan. Oh no, Hakka. I'm thinking of Vegas already, <laughs> already not Hakkasan. Dude, you're already thinking about Prosper. Uh, yeah. Pr uh, Prosper, white label. Definitely. Uh, guys, by the way, Tim and I will be, I'll be there two days. Uh, out what let's let's go ahead and talk real quick about uh sorry Hakasan but or Hariksan, uh your name in, reminded. Uh what's our schedule this month for some appearances? So this month in, wh yeah, white white label expo in Vegas. Um it's a free expo. Come out. There's gonna be a bunch of vendors, a bunch of speakers, there's a bunch of people there. Las Vegas, that's like the 25th and 26th, right? Or 26th and 27th. And then also seller growth summit, sellergrowthsummit.com. It's an event that's being sponsored mostly by Ping Pong and Sellers Funding. There's a couple other sponsors in there. But Bradley speaking, I'm speaking. There's a bunch of other big names. Sellergrowthsummit.com. That is February 28th. And you guys need to come check that out. If you want to hang out with me and Bradley, remember we're doing our live AMA from that location on the 28th. So we're going to be there together. So come hang out with us. Like free dinner, free networking cocktails, all sorts of cool stuff. Sellergrowthsummit.com and all White right, Label and then, Expo. Hey, for, 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 for White Label Expo, you're only going to be there one day, but l let's set a time. Oh, what day are you going to be there? Uh, is it Wednesday? Because it's a Wednesday, yeah. Thursday show. Yeah, I'll be there all Wednesday. Okay, how about Wednesday? As long as uh, we'll announce this later, but let, let's set it now. Wednesday, 12 o'clock, we'll do a Project X meetup uh, with Tim and Bradley at the Helium 10 booth at White Label Expo. So everybody, let's do a flash mob. We'll do some Zumba or something, but... Uh, Meet at Helium 10 booth, White Label Expo. Again, it's a free expo. I, I, I totally forgot that it was free. Um, and we'll meet and we'll do a big group project X picture for everybody who's in, in town yep. that day. So we'll be there 26th to the 27th. We're flying to San Francisco and we're going to be in San Francisco on the 28th for the Seller Growth Summit. Yep, yep. Uh, I got to spell his name. I got to pronounce his name right since I've been butchering it. Harik Harikasin. Harikasin says, testing is great. But aren't you killing the honeymoon phase? Uh, or how are you going to deal with that? Cheers from Germany and Turkey. Um, remember, for the PPC test listing, it's a test listing. That is not the listing that we're going to use uh, to launch the product. So, yeah, for that test listing, now there's going to be no more honeymoon phase. Uh, we talk about that a little bit more in Freedom Ticket if you guys are not, are not uh, familiar with that. But test listing, um, we don't care about because... It's only used for that PPC test. And once we actually have the real product, it's going to be a separate ASIN. So thank you for that question. Dude, we got RJ Martinez in here coming in from the merch community. What's up, RJ? And I just lost everybody's questions again. That was live. All right. Uh, Aaron says, GS1 UK is much cheaper than the US. Okay. We'll have to check that. I've been trying to... One of the vice presidents of, of GS1, the whole entire company... Uh, met me at like one of these booths uh, at the Prosper show last year and gave me his card. And and I, I've been wanting to bring him on the Serious Sellers podcast so I can interview him about this. Please I know tell me you lost the card. Questions. Do you still mm -hmm. have the card? No, I lost it. So <laughs> what a uh, that's my point. So like I've been trying to, and I sent them a message. I was like, hey, one of your VPs like, you know, gave me his card. And I want to bring him on the podcast so I can ask him questions and they didn't reply yet. So I'm still trying to get that, uh, get that uh, contact for you guys. All right, and I'm still losing questions, or I'm still losing questions, guys. So again, if you got your question missed, we'll uh, you know put it put it back here. But let's see, what is a good click through rate range from SkyGal seventy nine? We got a lot of people with a seventy nine in their thing. Go ahead, Tim. For a test listing, it does not matter. 
Um, I was doing an event in London last week and, and all these people are like, but with the test listings, I've done this and my click through rate sucked. It's supposed to suck. You're intentionally not trying to convert this listing. Remember, that's why the price is high. The picture sucks. Like if we convert too much and we sell too many, we lose our test subject, right? We can't test. So on your test, do not worry about your click through rate. Absolutely do not worry about your conversion rate because if you're converting, you're doing something wrong. We're intentionally trying not to convert. You want your click through rate to be just enough, just three or four clicks to get an average cost per click and that's it. So only look at the important columns, that's it. All we're looking at is impressions, cost per click, forget the other stuff. All right, and then how long should you run this test? Uh, Skygal is dominating all the questions here. Um, how long in order to get you know accurate data? How long did we run it there on those uh, three items? Do you remember? Most of them two weeks, and I think we just answered this a second ago, but two weeks gives us a good range. We get through two weekend cycles, two week cycles. It gives us a good average, and then usually after two weeks, we kill it. Okay, excellent. All right, let's see. Um, ah, OS Group says, hey, in the episode about PPC, it was said necessary to put keywords that we want to use in PPC, but if we want to target our competitor like Nike, should we also write it? So number one, don't target your competitor usually. It's not, it, first of all. It's not even relevant. Like, Yeah, it's not relevant. Like, just think about it, guys. If, you know, Nike or whatever, you know, if somebody's using that as a search term, they're looking for something specific. It's not like they see yours and it has a better price and a prettier picture that they're going to, oh, no, uh, I'm okay with uh, Pro Wings instead of Nike because, you know, the picture. <laughs> I was wondering who, who what, remembers what, Pro Wings. What tennis shoe brand name you're gonna come up with? When when I, when I was little, they used to call me the Pro Wing King because my my parents were so cheap I could only get Payless shoes. But <laughs> I was Pro Wing King in in junior high school. But anyways, it's not likely that you're gonna make conversions on your competitors' brand names. Secondly, it's against Amazon terms of service to put trademarked words into your listing. They will shut you name. down. Boom. All right. Um, let's see. Keyword question, are you using the whole long tail keyword or are you using the fragments that come from Frankenstein? So what we did, go back to that episode, the ones that we were using for our test, we were using like whole phrases uh, in there, all right, for for uh, the PPC test campaign because we don't get conversions off of single words, all right? We get it off of like phrases that people are searching for. Oh, good one. Um, again, I, I, Pierre, your, your, your question is probably more open-ended, but I'm going to make it specifically about the test campaign. So at what point should you pull a product back and focus on your next launch? So let's say you you did the PPC test campaign. What would you have seen, Tim, that makes us say, you know what, let's slow our roll here on this product. Like if there were barely any impressions, right? Um, if, if just the number of impressions was awful, another thing would be if my cost per click was just ridiculous. Like if it's a $12 kitchen item and my cost per click is consistently three or four bucks, I pull out another time I might pull out is if my keywords won't index guys, there's a lot of keywords that are hot, but you can't run PPC on. So there's like alcohol, tobacco, sex toys, like all that stuff. You might find a product that you that the keywords look you really always hot. Pulls up sex toys somehow in these AMAs. Like that's three episodes Dude, you're in a row. King of that. Like you're always talking. Don't get me started at Kevin King's event with all your examples of sex toys. I mean the keywords of sex toys. It's not like you act okay. Anyways, <laughs> moving on. So my point is like if you can't index the keywords in the test, it's a dead gum good thing you did the test. Because what if you tried to launch this product thinking you had a great keyword, right? There's been other times where like there was patent issues. And so like there are there are several ways in which you can use testing to figure out, hey, I'm going to scrap this idea. But generally, the impressions aren't what you thought they would be or the cost per click is just ridiculous. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, Peter says, how would you start testing a product if you have to wait for suppliers from China? Well, remember, the uh, what Tim did um, for those for those units is he got he he bought them from what Etsy some right yep yep you can buy them from Etsy you can buy them buy them from from like some Amazon seller who's not selling many I mean you can buy can, them from anywhere buy them from the store if you see it can I have permission go to go over thirty seconds for you got forty five seconds go okay all right so if I wanted to test okay that was gonna be too fast if I wanted to test a product like a wooden cocktail shaker okay and there's no wooden cocktail shaker that exists. Go to Google and type barware. And just in Google shopping, you'll see from like Webstaurant store, a stainless steel cocktail shaker and a wooden muddler. These go together, right? So set up a listing that's a combination between like a $2 stainless steel cocktail shaker and a $1 uh, wooden muddler. Now think about your keywords because all you're testing is keywords. If you want to test wooden cocktail shaker, now you have a listing that has a cocktail shaker and wooden muddler. 
Cocktail shaker, wooden. Cocktail shaker, wood. It's the keyword. So you can actually combine two things that will merge enough to make the keyword strange that you want to test. So if I combine those two products and set up a co or set up a PPC test, I can put keywords in my PPC test, PPC test like wooden cocktail shaker, and it will index. It'll run, and I can see if people are actually looking for wooden cocktail shaker, even if there's not a single one on this earth that yet exists. Boom, done. I know that's like sixty right. seconds, but it was a great answer. All right. Uh, Benji says, I may have missed it, but did you guys go over the PPC report and how to read it? Yes, we did. That was episode five. So make sure to check that out. Good question, Benji. All right. Let's see again, guys, just as a reminder, Peter and others, uh, we're only answering questions about, about uh, five and six or four and five, one and two, three, four, no, five and six, because that's most uh, relevant or most fresh in our minds right now. Um, let's see. Oh, here, here. Uh, this will be for for Tim. What's the most expensive item you sold on a test campaign? The actual product that we were testing, we ended up selling after we launched for like 130 bucks. And I think for a test listing, we were running it for 199. And we just had five of them. It didn't cost us that much to produce. It cost like 30 bucks to produce. And we made them ourselves, actually. And we put like five of them in there. And I think actually two sold during the test. Yeah. Well, I think we sold the egg tray for like 100 what? 120 bucks or a couple of 120 like, bucks, right? Some, no, 60 crazy. bucks. It was two for 120. So like oh, 60 two for bucks. 120. Okay. 60 bucks. Yeah, each. That was crazy. crazy. All right. Let's keep going here. Uh, I'm going to go back to the uh, questions that we got during the week. Let's see. This was about episode six. Let's go to episode six. And this question is not many questions from Facebook. Looks like they're all from YouTube. Hey, Mel, if you're watching this, where's my Facebook questions? All right. Here we go. Um, Uh, Il, oh man, these names, you guys are killing me with these names. <laughs> Bill Garks, no, Noxy Millen. All right. Bill Garks, Noxy Millen says, great episode. My question is how much did the test campaigns co cost? We actually showed some of those in the screenshots. You could see what we paid. And I remember there was one, I was like, oh man, we, we paid a little bit more, but people are asking me like, Hey, do we have to, do we have to order like 30 units? Guys, if you have a hundred dollar product or $50 product, uh, Ordering, you know, 50 units, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money that, you, that you're spending, especially if you're paying retail price just for the test. So, so adjust it as your budget sees fit. I mean, the more data you get, the better, but you don't have to do it exactly like we did. You know, you don't need like 200 clicks or whatever the, the ones that our Axe campaign had. You can work with less, but just know the more data you get, it's a good thing. Let's see. Um, ah. Oh, great question here. Anton 0711 says from YouTube, and this is about episode six. Um, hey, I got a question about episode six. To get the CPC of a new product, which isn't listed on Amazon, would it not be possible to take that main keyword in a selling product of mine and run PPC on it just to have the CPC for this keyword? Tim. If your actual product is relevant enough. Remember, because Amazon does, they index listings. They also index um, uh, PPC. So I cannot put this cup, you know, uh, like send 10 of these in and run a keyword for universal remote control. It doesn't work. They're not relevant enough. So what I have seen some people do is like, I have some people in my coaching program that sell, uh, health supplements and they wanted to find out if one additional ingredient would create a new product line and they're actually able to use the basis of what they existing had and just add like one little keyword with this additional compound in it and it worked but generally speaking it has to be really relevant to actually test it that's the academy awards i'm music. gonna find <laughs> you a song you just wait you just wait uh, all right um tony from youtube uh from episode five says what if a buyer buys our product and gives a bad rating uh, it could affect a lot when launching. So remember, just like we had said before, these, uh, yeah, if you get bad ratings, that's not great. But this is the only time you're ever going to use those ASINs, only for the test listing. You're going to you're gonna actually launch the product on a separate ASIN. Um, oh, here goes another name. Oh, no, Irina Brushneshvia. Uh, I don't have a good Russian pronunciation, sorry. Thank you so much for great content. What is the minimum that I can send to Amazon to test? So kind of along the lines of the previous question, um, I actually did a test just recently uh, for uh, another project I'm working on, just trying to do some investigation. And I just tried it with uh, with actually fulfilled by merchant only, 
and like only three products available because that was all I had just to see. I like, is it even possible? So again, what we recommend is doing FBA and probably, I mean, Tim can correct me about at least 10, but I did one with just three and I got tons and tons of information and I actually sold the three, the three units already had like a week's worth of information. But what about you, Tim? Do you have a, a minimum that you well, kind of set for yourself? Yeah, and you just said one of the problems. If you don't have enough in there, you run out. So you got a week's worth of information. I would have liked to have two weeks. Mm -hmm. But also remember Amazon is indexing based on inventory performance index right now. We're about to get really deep. So Amazon is actually not showing some listing in certain part of the countries if inventory isn't there. So if I only send three units and Amazon parks all of them on the East Coast, they might not even run the ads on the West Coast because they don't want to airship those bad boys all the way across the country for a $15 product. So you're only going to get half the impression. So I like to do 10 or 12. Remember, we suppress the listings intentionally, get them all the way distributed. Then we click it on so that the IP, the inventory performance index isn't going to not show our ads. Yep. Thank you very much for that question. Um, Pierre says, I've been selling on Amazon since July and I've learned more in the last 30 days with you guys than the whole time with a consultant. That's great to hear. Was the consultant Tim Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> that would be embarrassing. That would be very, like, Tim, hey, I paid you one-on-one -on -one and you're stuff. giving free information. Yeah, free information. You gave me. <laughs> um, speaking of consultant, Mo Moretti says, Freedom Ticket is gold. Kevin King is a man. So, guys, again, if you hear us referring in the episodes to Freedom Ticket, um, that's the full, that's that's more of the nitty-gritty stuff. It's about 50 hours worth of information. If you're a Helium 10 user or subscriber, you actually have full access to that. Otherwise, it costs $997, $997. But uh, our, our Helium 10 members got that hooked up. Um we talked about this uh, recently, Rahul, about the minimum number of samples. And does the sample have to be the exact same as a listing picture? Well, yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be, but you should. I mean, you don't want you don't want people leaving you bad feedback and bad uh, metrics and and getting returns. You don't want a whole bunch of returns on your account because it's not as described. That's that's a that's a big um, invitation for Amazon to suspend you if you get like ten in a row. This product is not as described. So yeah, absolutely make it the same as as the picture. All right, let's see. I'm still looking at these questions, trying to find. Raz is asking about uh, insurance and liability issues as, as well as lawsuits. Are these considerations that need to be made? Absolutely. Again, uh, a lot of these things we talk about in Freedom Ticket, but we didn't go too much in detail here on Project X. But these are things like, and as somebody mentioned before about patents and things like that. Remember, guys, don't think that by watching these 13 hours of, of, of episodes that it takes 13 hours to, to launch a product and be successful oh, on Amazon. Okay. <laughs> you know, that shut right. up song is way better than the Academy Awards. All right. Song. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm going to find um, another one even better. Raz is worried. Uh, I'm assuming she's talking about the uh, axe, not the egg tray. Like, but I guess I could take an egg tray and like beat somebody over the head with it or something. <laughs> but, I don't know. but guess what? If if they do, we got a coffin box. For oh, sorry. oh gosh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. that was dark <laughs> and horrible. What I'm sorry, talking? guys. So bad. Uh, Kim Min Lee, Anyang Haseo. All right. If we want to sell a Paw Patrol related merchandise, can I do this or do you need permission? Yes, you need permission. You need to be licensed and actually, you know, check out Paul Miller. Uh, just find him on, on, on Facebook and also on, uh, he was on a serious seller podcast. It was like episode 50. I, I know it because it was episode 50 episode 50 of serious seller podcast. Paul Miller talks all about licensing. We do not get into licensing here in project X, but that is absolutely a possibility. He actually has Paw Patrol license for some of his, uh, products. So make sure to check him out. Um, let's see. So yeah, don't do a Paw Patrol egg tray or, or something like that. Uh, you, you've got to have a license or else they'll shut you down. Tom says, if I use product search, the black box, I have different scores. There's, there's no scores in black box. So let me know what you're talking about there. Um, or, or open up something with customer support. You might be thinking about a different tool. All right. Another person talking about the price per click on the PPC test. We've kind of answered this already. I believe, uh, Caleb, right, Tim? Yep. You, you've yeah, we it. already covered that. How you know what song, go ahead. You know what song, what song comes to mind when I think about PPC tests? What? You down with PPC? Oh, 
All right. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking of we got to make a song like the remember the Naughty by Nature you down with OPP? Yeah, you'd like we you, you down, down with, with PPC. PPC. Yeah, you know. And then me. we we don't even know the next like what would the next part be? Oh, uh, you down with PPC. Uh my competitors got no hold on me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys. Back to the questions. Chris <laughs> Chenault. <laughs> Uh, oh so gosh. your volume requirement for impressions is four to six thousand. Your click through one to two. How does the unoptimized CTR compare to optimized? I'm assuming he's talking about listings, not pictures. Later, it so, doesn't yeah. matter. Click through rate on a test does not matter. Don't worry Remember, about it. Don't title. stress about it. Bump it. Yep. So don't don't have such a terrible image. You know, it's. I mean. Yeah. Tim took it with a cell phone, but it still was a pretty decent image. But you don't want to have a picture of something completely different because then you're not having an apples to apples test. Um, is this is about more like episodes one and two, but I'll allow it. Uh, Jan says, "Is there a way to search for trending <laughs> products on Etsy and Pinterest if you don't know exactly what you're looking for?" Well, what's your methodology there? Uh, um, unfortunately, there's not like a magic box or black box for Pinterest or Etsy. We're just scrolling through and just manually checking. So we we look at anything that looks unique that we've never seen before. We're literally just scanning as many product types as we can. And then we're jumping over there to Magnet uh, or Cerebro and seeing if there's kind of an anomaly, a, a keyword that's popping off with some search volume there. So no, there's nothing automatic. And again, don't take that as discouragement. It just means that all these other Tom, Dick, and Harrys out there are not going to do the work that you are. This gives you an advantage because since you have to manually look and it can't be automated, you can find those products without everybody else finding it. Oh, good job. Were you trying to play music? Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> good job. All right. Now I feel All right. challenged. All right. I'll raise you one right there. All right. Let's keep going. Right. <clears throat> um, Raul, yeah, this this was in a, in, a, in a previous episode. Actually, last week's AMA, we talked a little bit about that, how you just got to sometimes just see what's trending around you. And then you just start down these rabbit uh, rabbit trails and you'll you'll figure you'll you'll get to like something that you never started with but is is going to be interesting just like we do with the sugar skulls let's see the handyman says the coffins were fbm and you pointed out that when you list you would more than likely list at the top being fba perhaps our fbm because storage fees through amazon are probably crazy expensive um the size of this isn't 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 that big uh, as what you think i mean I think we um uh we're we're gonna show it in a future episode like a sample uh, of it so like you can just see the size and then we talked about the sample in the last episode of the existing of the existing seller. It's only like fourteen inches tall, so we're we're talking like like about this tall. So the storage fees aren't that much. Uh, when you look at the listing quality, the image quality, it's just basically a non-experienced Amazon seller. You can kind of know. Uh, I, I really highly doubt it's about storage fees. Um, Sherry's asking about just regular auto PPC campaigns. Uh, we'll get we'll get that later. Um, let's see. Kim says, "Can you please post those dates on here?" I'm not sure what. Maybe you're talking about the shows. Um, oh, she was talking about. All right, let's say it one more time. February 26th, White Level Expo in Vegas, noon. February 26th, White Level Expo. It's free. Me and Bradley are gonna have an impromptu meet up there. February 28th, Seller Growth Summit, San Francisco. Okay. Oh, so it uh, looks like Saad is going to come out to that. So awesome. Sa awesome. Hey, Saad's actually speaking at that thing. Oh, okay. Sa cool. Which Saad's one? an Amazon ninja you guys haven't even heard of. Just wait. Saad's bringing some thunder. Underground goat. Underground ninja. Let's see. Goat? <laughs> Underground goat. That, that, you, know, you know what goat is, right? No. Greatest of all time. Oh. Uh, yeah, I like, would, like they say I would, Le LeBron is the I, goat, you know, or... Michael I would Jordan. I would put sod up there in the goat list for sure. All right, cool. All right, Christina says my test product is quite cheaply made compared to my real product. Wouldn't that affect click through rate because of the photos aren't as nice? So we, we talked about that a little bit. First of all, if it's cheaply made, you usually can't tell from the photos. Yeah. Um necessarily. And, so and remember, our test listing is not testing a product, it's testing a keyword. Thank you. So even if your product stinks, it doesn't matter. People, um, so, you know, I do these trips to Iwu, uh, China, and we're looking at all these different products and people are always grabbing a product and they're like, Ooh, this looks cool, except I don't like the color. Or maybe like, I wish it were thicker plastic. I'm like, buy, like buy the case of them. Like 
buy it and let's test it because you're not testing the product, you're testing the keyword. You didn't know it existed. Let's test it. And if it works, then when you actually place your real order, we'll fix it. We'll make it a little bit nicer. We can increase the quality. We can change the color. We can change the packaging, right? You're just testing keywords. Don't get too bent out of shape about quality right now. All right. Caleb says, may test listing affect your seller review? So I think you're talking about the seller feedback. So again, that's one of the reasons why before though, just make, don't, don't let people order a wooden egg tray and you're sending them uh, Irvine Axe because then your seller feedback is, hey, I didn't get as described and, and your seller feedback will go down for your whole account, all right? But if you're talking about product reviews, we don't even care if it gets bad reviews in your product because yeah. um, you're trashing that, that ASIN later. Yeah, and remember, most of the issues that people are gonna have with things like quality, packaging, color, that's all ASIN level, which does not affect your seller level. And if it does, you can get it expunged. You can get it marked through because you say, hey, this is a product problem, not a seller. Now, this is why you don't want to do something like cancel an order or FBM and not ship it. That will affect your seller rating. Caleb says you set up an exact match campaign, but then you got results with broad and phrase match. Remember, we only showed you one part of what we were setting up on the episode five, but you know, off screen, we set up all kinds of campaigns. We, we actually did different ones on different, uh, on different, uh, listings so, to, to show it. So, so for all intents and purposes, run an exact match, just an exact match on the keywords. And we did that for a couple of weeks, but if you look back at our report, you notice the dates changed after we ran exact, then we ran broad, then we ran phrase. And that was just to show you the difference, right? So do as I say, not as I do. Like yeah. we only test with exact, but we wanted to show you how one keyword in exact would be different than the same keyword in broad. Gulsan is is laughing at us. I don't know what what part she was laughing She's at. She's always laughing. I don't. Gulsan is I don't always know. laughing at us here. All right, let's see. Um, oh, I love it. The handyman is talking to other people here. It's great. They're having conversations. Love it. Uh, Mario is asking, what are the main reasons to do the PPC test? We talked about that. Make sure to go back and rewatch the episode, Mario. All right. Uh, I apologize. We we didn't make it clear enough, but but if you rewatch it and pay attention and don't be like Jacob and trying to listen to a lecture of Spanish subjunctive verbs, uh, instead of project X. Um, Hey, I don't criticize Jacob. Come. That boy is hustling. Hey, he's a hustler. Every he's a hustler, day, baby. Hustling. Okay. All right. Uh, max budget you set for your PPC test. Uh, pretty quick, uh, quick question here. I just don't want to run out of budget. So I might do 50 bucks a day and three bucks a click. You're not going to hit that. But remember, if your competitor is spending 250 a click and you're only bidding two, you're not going to get the same number of impressions. Your data is going to be jacked. And if you run out of budget, you're not going to get true data anyways. So generally speaking, you can set a $500 a day budget and $200 a click, and it's not going to matter because it's not going to go up that high. You just want to make sure you're bidding higher than it actually will top out. Otherwise, you quit buying that data. M, my favorite digital nomad from Morocco, who I was supposed to meet up with but i didn't get to morocco my last trip how's it going she asked would you do the same test uh strategy in eu or I, actually that's not that's not uh oh yeah would you do the same test strategy in eu um so you yeah. can but it's going to be harder because there's not as much of a test subject remember you're going to have depending on which marketplace in eu you're going to have a lot less um, impressions, right? And if I've got my product parked in Germany, it's not going to index and the ads aren't going to be the same in Spain, right? So you can't really do this test across multiple, you know, the, like the pan EU platform. You can do the test within individual markets in the EU or now it's separate Brexit UK. Um, but <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> uh, Brexit. Anyways, uh, you can do it to individual platforms. Just understand that your impressions are going to be a lot less because there's just a lot less people on that marketplace. All right. Peter says, if you have to choose one event, the white label or seller growth event, which would you recommend to go? Well, if you live in Vegas, it's a no brainer. Go, go to the white label, but it's different things. I mean, white label does have some Amazon speakers like myself and Anthony Lee from here at this company, but it's not all about Amazon. It's about other things, but it's free. Um, if you live in San Francisco, no brainer, go to the San Francisco one. Um, yeah, I would that say that hyper -focused like focused on, yeah, on the, the, the stellar growth summit is like crazy focused. Like I think there's eight of us speaking and it's all like hardcore, amazing Amazon stuff or white labels spread out. Like they're doing a bunch of CBD stuff and like, it's, it's kind of more broad. Aaron's asking if you set your release date to a later date, would that do the same thing? Um, so the reason what we were talking about in episodes four and five about uh, suppressing the listing is so that we can wait until our FBA inventory was distributed 
uh, across all warehouses. Um, does I, I haven't tested that because just suppressing is so easy. That's all I do. But do you, have you ever set the date and does the same thing, uh, Tim? So I've actually played with that. And if you set the date, it seems like sometimes the distribution slows down too. Cause they're like, they can wait, you know, it, it takes some of the, uh, urgency off of them distributing those products. Okay. All right. Let's keep going here. Um, Ramona says, I currently have my own invention. Oh, you fancy, huh? That is ready for <laughs> manufacturing. Fancy, huh? Is it wise to consider my product as a test item on Amazon? The same as an already known product. Well, here's the thing. Remember, we're not testing the products. We're testing the. Keywords and Keywords. Ramona, you oh. may be too deep. Like this yeah. is a little different. Using your own invention is different than the method that we're finding here, which is like finding that Yeti, right? So it, it's like you're almost committed. Now, in your scenario, this is a place like we talked about 3D printing earlier. We, if you were just going to use Amazon as your platform or your main platform, we might have tested it before we actually invented it and took it to manufacturing. Now that you've got a manufacturing, you're kind of all in. But you can still take some prototypes now while your full runs are being produced and run the test listing or the test PPC to go ahead and get information that you can use to optimize those listings, which will make a lot more sense in further episodes. Because we're going to take that that uh, PPC test data and move it directly into our optimized listing. So there's still ways you can use the same information, but you're a little bit too deep now than to just go ahead and test to determine if you're going to do it or not. All right. Did you change the uh, barcodes when you change your list from test to real one? Yes, because remember, it's different ASINs. You cannot use the yeah. same barcode for two different ASINs. That's very important. Good question. Um, is the AMA always at 4 p.m.? If you're in Eastern Standard Time, yes, they are. 1 p.m. every Friday. Uh, Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, and whatever the heck, Morocco Time, and and Japan Time, and everybody else is there. Bua, can I ask about Keyword Tracker yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> if, Shut if it up, has to Bua. do with episodes five and six, <laughs> yes. But uh, but um, we go a little bit deeper into Keyword Tracker in later episodes, mm. but if, if it's relevant, you know, ask away. I just won't answer it if it's not relevant. Uh, we made Kim laugh too. All right. Uh, <laughs> love, Dana says, don't give up your day job. So I'm sorry. You know, we we try we we tried the stand up comedian, but but I this guess. is our day jobs. <laughs> like we're doing our day job. Doing Wait, our, that's really I, I think sad. he's talking about the 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 sophomoric humor uh, attempts at humors. Don't. I thought don't, I was talking about our singing. Uh, I thought our oh, singing yeah, was that on too. point. That, that probably. I don't too. know. I mean, I'm biased, but all right. Uh, I joined a little bit late. Let's see. We got a lot of the same questions. So yeah, Adrian, make sure to check this on the replay. Will you answer that a little bit earlier? Um, Aaron knows a, a road manager for Naughty by Nature. All right, excellent. We're going to make that happen. Oh, parody, man. Parody version. Let's see. Batteries in a flash. Signed up and we'll be there. I'm not sure which one you're talking about, but I'll see you. I'll see you in one Somewhere. of those events. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Now, now we, now we from Vancouver. How's it going? Um, yes, I would use similar strategy on EU. We talked about that already. Um, Katie, this is going to be a question for on week. I'm actually editing those episodes. Now it's going to be like eight, uh, episode eight and nine. We're going to talk about shipping and logistics. So we'll get into that in a couple of weeks. Um, Vlad says, how does index checker work? It's just checking three different ways. If you are indexed. All right. Uh, traditional index, there's a field ASIN test that we do, and then another uh, check that we are doing for the index, a uh, storefront index. Can a brand name be changed after creating the listing, not the test listing? Um, not automatically, You, but you have to open up a case, and it's possible, uh, it's possible to do that. But sometimes they deny it, but if you have a good case uh, to do it, they'll, they'll let you. But you just yeah. can't do it from your edit, Seller Central. All right. Um, Barricon is talking to Katie here. Now way. There we go. Tim, why don't you take this one? Would you do the test run for all the possible products as a first time seller when the financial budget is limited? Uh, I would say all the possible products, anything that you're thinking about launching, you need to test. If you've got a crap ton of products that are possible products, just narrow it down to two or three and start with them first. Right. Um, yeah, you don't want to go too deep. I feel like Bradley's trying to find the perfect song right here to shut me up. I know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> Dude, um, I've been looking too. I can't find anything else that's not inappropriate. Um, so so that's my answer. Is just Especially if you're tight on funds, um, 
pick one or two and try not to go too deep right now. Just pick the two or three that you're most excited about. Kearney says, question, why do you skip my questions? I, I don't know. I, I'm not looking at the names, but if if any that we skipped, um, it's most likely because it's not about episodes five and six. All right. Um, and yes, Bua, this is not about these episodes. I use another keyword. Oh, no, no, no. I guess, okay. A search engine found three keywords. I didn't show in Cerebro. I added these keywords in the keyword tracker and PPC. You can add keywords that you get from anywhere. Remember, we talked about, hey, I... I uh, some people use Google, um, Google Analytics to like look at keywords and find some trending words that maybe don't have Google too much Trends, volume. not Analytics. Google yeah, trends. not Google Analytics. Google Trends to see what what's got some activity out there in Google that's not on Amazon yet. You can you can put the keywords that you find don't have to always be from Amazon. Remember what we were doing for some of these is we were looking on like Etsy reviews and Pinterest reviews for like other keywords that we hadn't thought of. Um, I'm still finding. Uh, I'm looking at reviews and there is stuff that I never even thought about that could be used. Like there was one I saw, I don't remember. No, I think it might've been for the, uh, for an egg tray. Somebody was using an egg tray for chocolates or something like that. Like, I don't know. Oh, you sent me that. that. It's in the reviews. Yeah. It's in the review. Yeah, like, for like, chocolate. like show off my, my pretty chocolates in this tray. Yeah. What was the other product? There's something else There's like something artisanal else that people soap, are using it. like handmade yeah. soap bars or something. It's crazy. Yeah. So, so don't just rely on, on any one tool, even though Cerebro is the best tool out there, you've got to be looking at, and crowdsourcing. You've got to be looking at other places for, for your keywords that you're used for your test campaigns or for your regular campaign. So there we go. Uh, are you coming anytime soon in Canada? Um, you have any Canada trips planned, uh, Tim? So the Seller Growth Summit, uh, it was decision made earlier today. We're actually going to take that on the road. And we're going to later this year do a Seller Growth Summit workshop in Canada. We don't know the details cool. yet, but keep an eye out for it. All right. Well, I'll, I'll announce it on Facebook. If you guys are in the, I don't know about the Helium 10, but the Private Label Legion Facebook page, we'll announce it there when we do it. We got one fan. SkyGal79 says you guys are hilarious. All right. Somebody thinks Thank you, funny. SkyGal. Oh, it's another one with 79. It's yeah, always we got a lot people. of 79 people. I'm 78, so like uh, I'm assuming you're. No, I'm not gonna call out their age. So sorry, you guys well, can do I'm the math on your sure own. You just did. <laughs> I know, but people are usually lazy to do the math in their head. So I'm not doing the math in my head. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, Benji says, "How many egg trays or the product you're researching? You want to see in Etsy or Pinterest to decide if there's enough likes or demand." So what we're looking for is, of course, if we type in wooden egg tray, everything that shows up. Is going to be wooden egg trays. That that's not like some revelation or anything. What we want is we type a general word like egg tray, egg holder, whatever, and now now all of a sudden independently there's a whole bunch of wooden ones showing that there's a trend. That's what you want to see. It's not like oh there's a certain number, but if I see like four or five out of the first ten, where on Amazon there's like zero out of ten, that's what makes me excited. Uh, M says, are you going both to the White Label Expo in London and Frankfurt? Uh, not, I'm not going to the London one. Possibly it's already over. Frankfurt. London was already London's done already like over. Okay. two months ago. Yeah. Frankfurt, I'll say this. There's an exceptionally good chance you're going to see a lot of us in Frankfurt. Okay. It's not well, confirmed, but there's a pretty good chance. Excellent. All right. If PPC impressions are not equal to exact searches, then how is that considerably better than Helium 10 estimation? It's not, all right? It's two completely different things. So in in Helium 10 is giving you search volume estimation. And then go back to episode four where we explain it. Uh, the PPC, you're getting something that Helium 10 can't give you, which is your potential reach on impressions. Because remember, it's not just uh, organic searches that bring people to your listing. There's an organic search. They click on another listing. You've got a sponsor down on the bottom. There's an impression there. You click on that. And sometimes you see another you're not on down. page one. Sometimes it actually shows up like in some different. So what we're looking for is similarities. Like there's yeah. uh, even in a lot of our tests, like we would get uh, Helium 10 would tell us there's 6,000 searches on a keyword in a month. And we would run the PPC test for two weeks and we'd get 2,600. Like that's close, right? Because that's going to be what, you know, 50. 400 versus 6,000. Like it's close. Now, what we don't want to see is where Helium 10 is telling us there's 10,000 searches a month for this keyword and on impressions, we only get 800 a month. Like that's where we go, oh, we're glad we did this test and didn't just run this. Because remember, 
Helium 10 is only good as the data that it can get, which isn't always perfect. And sometimes, especially when there's like an algorithm flux or something crazy that happens, an algorithm shift, it'll it'll change some of that up. So we're just, it's a little bit of reassurance that we're really close to the same numbers as we expected. That dang bald spot. You got me all self-conscious about, am I balding or is Dude, this just my I'm, hat? Hold on. Hey, I don't know where... <laughs> Bradley, I'm be honest with you. Your hair does not look nearly as good as mine, but it's not awful. Uh, hey, it's not uh, awful. That pe- look, at, hey, look at how full this is. People like, I'm always never, look ask at why look at I wear a hat. Line. That's perfect. I cannot comb my, my hair does not cooperate. That's why I wear a hat. It's not a fashion thing. It's because I can't comb my hair. It, like, it doesn't go down. So anyways, um, uh, Mahmoud <laughs> says, can I test a product that's similar but not exactly the same as what I sent to Amazon just to get data and raise the price to something so no one will be willing to pay? Well, just be careful. Yeah. Don't put like $300 or something. Yeah, you don't want people to 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 buy it, but at the same time, they're not going to click at it. And if you get zero yeah. clicks, you don't get your data. So and I think he's asking more about the similar as opposed to the expensive. Yeah, just get it close enough that it correlates enough to match those keywords. Get it close enough. You can test the keywords of something that does not yet actually exist. All right, here's a question for you, uh, Tim. Tim said he doesn't want to see FC transfer inbound during the. What does this mean? All right, so what we're talking about is we want the products to actually be available before we start running our test listings because a lot of times you won't get those impressions and you won't get that ad running if you're an FC or inbound. Inbound means the product is left your location, your warehouse, wherever, and it's inbound to Amazon, all right, to the first place. So if I send in a box of 10 egg trays from my shipping location to the first Amazon Fulfillment Center, Dallas or wherever it is, that's inbound. Once it gets there, they might take two of those units and set them at DF1 and the other eight units they're going to distribute. That's FC transfer or fulfillment center transfer. So we don't want to see inbound or FC transfer. We want to wait until all of them are available. All right. Available to sell. Then we unsuppress the listing, turn it on. Boom. Done. All right. And that actually answers um, the question from YouTube uh, that uh, Mahmoud asked. No, not Mahmoud. uh, Mohammed asked. Last week, uh, I don't get about removing the main image to get suppressed. So they want to suppress the listing and purpose. What for? So yes, that. Yeah. And the reason we don't close the listing is they'll stop the transit. They'll just stop shipping it. All right. And we don't want to like, it it just seems that when you suppress it, Amazon's like, oh, there's a problem, but they'll fix it. Let's go ahead and keep distributing. So they'll keep shipping that stuff around without the listing actually going live. Okay. All right. Uh, Kyung, Kyung Min Lee. Uh, is asking about uh, LLCs and things like that. Those are things that we talk about in depth in uh, Freedom Ticket. So make sure to to check that out. We we, we didn't do anything about like a uh, business entity creating or anything like that uh, on Project X. Uh, let's see. Dominique says, "Can I do a test product like online arbitrage if I don't live in the USA?" Yes. Um, What's I, with I, the offer in, today from I, I don't know. I'm, I'm in a mood, man. Uh, I was in London last week, and people were were you know doing these tests already. People that have been kind of follow. And in fact, there's a uh, Pete. If Pete Bump is listening to this, he's in my coaching program, and I didn't meet him in person until we were in London. And that's what he's doing is like he sends something from Etsy to a 3PL like Amazon Prep Center. They package it, send it in for him. So you can do that. You can drop drop that stuff to a fulfillment center, a friend, a relative, something. But you can live anywhere in the world and do this as long as you have someone that can receive it, prep it, ship it for you. Uh, real easy one. Would you consider using the success score as a benchmark for a potential product? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, getting, getting All right. We're going to hit okay, some guys, false setup uh, voice in a minute. It's going to be good. Uh, lesson 101, how to make sure that you get your questions picked on the live broadcast. Comments like this. Thank you, Bua. Very nice. I was going to say, if you start the comment like, you guys are so cool, because we don't ever hear that in life um, (laughs) at all, then we'll definitely answer it. And Bradley will show it off too. Um, We don't, right? We'll we'll keep you guys updated where we're going to be because every time we do travel, it'd be great to have little little Project X meetups um, around. So, so just, you know, follow us on Facebook and, and, and the, 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 Helium 10 users group. And if we're going to go to a new city and we can do a Project X meetup, we absolutely will. Later on this year, July, I'm doing like a round the world trip. The Helium 10 is such a great company to work at. When you hit two years, 
they give you a four week paid sabbatical. So like I, I'm being paid and I can go anywhere I want in the world for four weeks and still get paid. And, and so I'm, I'm doing around the world trip. So I'll definitely be meeting up with uh, a lot of you. And yes, M, I am finally going to Morocco uh, at that time. All right, let's keep going. Uh, Heidi wants an event in Honolulu, Hawaii. Okay, Katie says, does Amazon tell you which location to send your product to and how do you find that out? So here's there's two stages of this. When you set up your shipment to um, Amazon, yes, they tell you the the, the uh, warehouse, the main warehouse where your product or warehouse is that it's going to go to. It could be one or it could be up to three. Um, I've seen one go to, you'll say, hey, send three here, send two here, unless you do a case pack. If you do a case pack, that means you're going to send it all to one. But what Tim showed in that last episode, uh, I believe it was like five or six, is once that warehouse gets it, then they start distributing it all over the place. And you don't have too much visibility on that until they actually get to their locations. Uh, and you can't really control that process of it. Yeah. Uh, Harinder keeps asking about a, a, a product that's four pounds. That doesn't have much to do with it, but weight, weight doesn't really matter. Dude, um, sell that junk. Yeah. People are always like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to mention names. There's somebody out there that says, if it doesn't fit in a shoe box, don't sell it. Guys, that's horse crap. If you can make money and it's not incredibly difficult, sell it. I have sold stuff that like doesn't fit on a pallet. Like it's that oversized, like six feet long and made good money doing it. Like quit worrying about if it's this old bull crap, what courses in 2015 told you to do, like just make money selling a good product. Like look at freaking overstock.com. They sell freaking couches. And now look at Amazon. Amazon is now selling furniture. Amazon's selling freaking houses. You can get container houses for Amazon. Somebody's making money in there. Like quit worrying about what you've heard and just worry about what makes sense. Already says, would uh, high search keywords and keyword magnet with loads of competition reflect a high, higher cost in PPC? I mean, sometimes, but don't. That's the whole reason again why we do the PPC test. I mean, if yeah. Amazon can't even give you the accurate information, you can't like think that hey, I can take uh, metrics from a tool that are meant to be for something else and kind of like extrapolate PPC costs. It's all depends uh, about the competition for that keyword. Uh, there are some people who are the top sellers of a keyword and they don't even do PPC on that keyword. So like there's so many factors in testing is just really the closest that you're going to get to the, the real deal. Um, M loves when we sing talk. All right, there we go. A render says, change your profile to a sex. <laughs> I think he was talking about how to, he was getting, Harinder was getting mad that we weren't answering his question. Harinder, the reason why I wasn't answering your question, because it's not about episodes five and six. All right. And just to prove that's not true. Horrender, we have your picture up right now, and I'm sorry picture, to say man. you are not a sexy girl. Yeah, sorry, no. So debunked. <laughs> Myth debunked. Myth debunked. Project X, Heidi is all in for Project X meetups, all right? Um, I have no idea what Paulina is talking about here. Paulina from Mexico. What's up? Moretti is trying to help out with Harinder. He's like, all right, Harinder. He felt bad that Harinder wasn't getting his question answered. So, <laughs> so he's like, oh, let, let and, me help you out, brother. And Moretti is also not a sexy girl, but that hair is on fire. Yeah. Pull that up. That's good. Look at that Ooh. hair, man. I'm jealous. He's got the 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 blue steel look uh, going on from uh, Zoolander. That's straight up blue steel right there. <laughs> My goodness. All right. Um Oh, no, if, okay. <laughs> if anybody on here doesn't know what blue steel is, we can't be friends. Anymore. Yeah. Yeah. We can't be friends. Like, or you're, you're probably, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, uh, reason number two of how you get your questions answered. Look at this. This is great. I run out of words. Every time you guys teach something always great and different. It shows that you love what you do. makes everything easier. You're the best. I'm sure he or she is talking to both of us. So thank you for that. Dominique. I, I saw Bradley. I didn't see Tim's name in there. I know. Don't try to church it up. Bradley. Oh, Paulina knows what's up. The Magnum. Can you the Magnum. The Magnum? That's there what we I'm go. talking about. All right, guys. One more question from the uh, from or a couple more questions from the old ones here. Uh, Darsha says, if Amazon asks for an invoice for the testing products, what should I do? Uh, that's not going to happen, right, Tim? No, because the only time they ask for invoices is if it's like an arbitrage item that's in an existing brand that's had problems with counterfeit stuff before like that. And I mean, nobody's complaining about your test listings, right? I, I won't say it will never happen, but I've never heard of or seen that happen before. So I think it's a mute point. 
All right. Uh, a lot of these questions, I think you guys asked previously on the previous episode, and now you guys repeat it because it's the exact same question here that we had put in our Google Doc. So that's great. Here's something from Katarina. No, not Katarina. A Katarina. I keep missing that one name. Uh, Amazon tends to stop or slow down showing you for PPC if the CTR and conversion rates are low. Does it influence our test? Now, it can, but where I've seen that happen is only after that like two week mark. All right. So generally it takes two weeks for Amazon to say, oh, this listing sucks. We'll quit showing it as many times. And where you'll, what you'll see is you'll see like your impressions are very consistent for a week, two weeks, three weeks, and then it'll die. So don't worry about where it starts dipping off. Like worry, just get as much as you can. There have been times when I've done a test where I'm getting like solid data for a week. And then on day eight, it like just completely craps the bed. Like it's done. That's when Amazon has caught that somehow and said, why don't we, we don't want to keep showing this. So we just take that week's worth of information, multiply it by four and there's our monthly data. All right. But generally you can get two weeks out of it pretty easily. This next name I can't say because it, they literally wrote it in Cyrillic. So um, I, I'm not even going to try, but they're asking, this is about based on episode five. They asked this question on YouTube. Can you explain why it's needed to launch to lunch? to launch because i'm fat and i like to eat yeah <laughs> wait wait wait. no i'm on the wrong question no the one i was looking at was from steve steve my buddy steve cloud steve. says on each of your products how much money did you spend on inventory ppc shipping and amazon fees many of us are new soon to be sellers would like to know how much to budget for this testing phase uh good job on project x tons of valuable information so we, uh, we had this a little bit but yeah, yeah that's a tough answer um yeah. Generally speaking, here's what I don't think. I, I think that if anybody tells you you can launch a successful Amazon business with $3,000, they're lying to you. Have people done it? Sure. Is it consistently possible? No. Now, what you can do is you can test for several hundred dollars and then start saving up some money for your first product, second product, third product. But listen, don't assume that if you've got three or $4,000 to your name, you can throw it into that and double, triple, quintuple that money because I mean, even after you test stuff, sometimes things don't work. Like this is not a given. So we are not guaranteeing you success. We're not saying that anything that we're showing you is going to guarantee you returning your investment. Anybody that's telling you that they can guarantee a return is absolutely full of crap. Don't listen to them. They're straight up bald faced lying to you. Okay. Um, I tell people that like, if you want to have some wiggle room to test three or four products and launch potential two or three products, I think you need five, six, seven thousand dollars. Now there's differences in there. Some people are having stuff made in the US with super low MOQs. They're getting stuff made in India with super low MOQs. You can buy 50 of this, 50 of that, 50 of that, and you're fine. Um, but I don't think that you can get into this whole game of fifteen hundred dollars, but you definitely don't need to buy a whole container of anything, right? So where I where, like, especially my coaching students, I'm like, hey, we can take this really slow. We can test a few things now, you know, pretty cheap and like slowly save up for your first product launch. That's fine. But if they were like cash on the table, we're going to start doing this. Just my opinion. I don't think you should do it unless you have the disposable income. Do not rack this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, man. He took me off. Much. <laughs> keep, 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 uh. Yeah, just keep in mind nothing's guaranteed. So I'm gonna say like five or six thousand before I would even try to launch one. Hey, it almost looks now that like my my soundproofing here like bleeds into yours. Like you got the it looks like you got the same you got the same oh. uh, the same panels. Look at that. That's pretty cool. How yeah. cool is that? You switch sides. Now I'm on the wrong side. Yeah. Well, why you, you gotta shut right me up away. when I'm on my soapbox? <laughs> All right. Um uh, should we do FBM or also FBA to have more accurate data? Absolutely, FBA, FBA. Mario. FBA. FBA. Uh, Mahmoud says, I just listened to your latest podcast. It was great. Oh, that was the uh, the brick and mortar one. Yeah, again, we don't talk about that in Project X. Um, but yeah, that was on the latest Serious Sellers podcast. Let's see. As a newbie seller, I, guess, I think Luis might have got your answer, your question answered because that was that was Steve's question as well. Um, so yeah, do, do do what works for you. You don't have to spend five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars on a test if you if you don't want to, yeah. right? Do I've life. done tests for as low as like two hundred dollars. That's product and PPC and shipping and everything. Yeah. Handyman says, "I think you should broadcast twenty four seven for us junkies. Neither of you needs to sleep today. Nah, sleep's overrated, dude. You know how stupid we would get after about fourteen hours on here. Oh. It would be, it would be like downright kick us off YouTube because it would just get ridiculous." All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode. Uh, we've gone through six episodes, so we're almost halfway through 
Project X. Not quite. Are we not going to have like a giveaway or anything? No giveaways today because uh, Cassandra didn't even come on. So like, I don't even know if Cassandra's here. But Cassandra, what are you doing? Mm. Where's Cassandra at? Um, let me. Oh you know what? Let me try and brainstorm an idea while you answer a question here. Hold on. Oh, I'm going to try wait. and brainstorm a question. You ain't a question. I'll brainstorm the idea. I don't, I don't trust your creativity for. Hey, but how hey, are you going to give away helium ten stuff? You. Don't, yeah, right, you, so, you guys can so, have a year for Helium 10 or like some crazy let's thing. Give, let's come. give away a ticket to the Seller Growth Summit. I can do oh, that. Oh, you're okay. Oh, San shoot. San Francisco, Feb 28th. I'll give away a ticket to that. My goodness. All right. Actually, so, I'll give away two tickets. The winner gets him and a plus one. Dang. How, How much is that worth? Uh, Like $1,000. Whoa, whoa. Good Lord, man. Tim yeah, is right. feeling generous today. Tim is feeling generous. All right. Have a so. Um, yeah, let, let me let me give you a question while I think of the contest here. Um, I think we should do it in the live chat, and I think that the fifth person to answer correctly is the winner. I can't view live chat; fast. It, it, it'll crash like for the live chat uh, on here because it'll it'll just like, oh, look at everybody saying, "Pick me, pick me." Look, My we goodness. can do it this fast. Let's a ask There's a question. No way. And the fifth correct answer, because the first one's just too fast of a typer. The fifth one gets two free tickets. Two free tickets. All so right. You have to ask a question that's very, very specific. About one of the episodes. Okay. Um, while, I, while I'm thinking about that, here is a question for you to answer from a user. Okay. Um, let's see. Look, we got everybody on the hook. You Here better go. think of a good, a good for for test purposes. What are the <clears throat> use? This is from Krish, Krish from YouTube. For test purposes, what are the use cases of when you would want to use broad or exact or phrase? Uh, I'm really confused now. She says. All right. So, <clears throat> when we're running our test, we're just looking at PPC. We're just looking at impressions and cost per click. But remember, if we actually want to sell this product, we're going to launch it. We want more data. So a lot of times I'll run a test campaign for like a week or two and determine, all right, things look good. I'm going to go ahead and launch this. Then I'll take those same keywords and open them up to broad or phrase, keep running the test, which will tell Amazon, hey, go out there and hunt for more keywords. Like, give me some more love. Give me some answers. And those answers will occasionally find additional keywords I didn't know existed that are relevant with impressions and low competition. And those keywords, I will actually move to my actual built, fully optimized running listing, right? But I will only do that after I've gone through the initial test phase. Now I'm on the hunt, search, find phase, right? So that's when I would do that. On episode six, isn't is this that a question? Yeah, no, I'm asking you. On oh. episode six, isn't that where we went into like the differentiation and things like that? Yeah, yeah, we, we showed okay. the difference and we even showed the report where the results were different, whether it's exact, broad, or phrase. Yeah. Wait, the results were on episode five for the PPC test, wasn't it? And six, yeah, yeah, we yeah, 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 yeah. All right, sorry, so sorry, sorry. let's do the, because we, we barely got, I didn't know because we barely got any questions on episode. Are we doing the contest yet? Six. Yeah, I'm trying I'm trying to do the contest. All right. So if that was episode six, that, that had to be, yeah, episode six. All right, the question is, during that episode. Wait, time out. Go ahead. Just, just to make sure, this is the contest, right? Yes, this is the contest. Okay. So right. the correct answer that is typed into the YouTube live stream, the fifth one to answer gets the two free tickets. Yes. And then, right. guys, to be eligible to, you have to have at least click the like. So make sure to click like right now on, <laughs> under this video. All right. So everybody click like. And then on episode six, Tim and I, by the way, guys, if you haven't noticed, we didn't, we don't rehearse these episodes, The one, even the ones that we did. <laughs> we were just like going down, just like finding random things. But when we were on episode six, we found something that was pretty like cool for the axe. Like we were like, whoa, that is something that we definitely need uh, for the axe. And it gave us a little bit more, more um, trust. What, what, what was that thing? And how did we find it? It was a way to differentiate the axe. What was it that we wanted to have? One, and how did we find it? Two, Heidi's one, Kim's two, Memphis three, Benji. Caleb Branson is the winner. Caleb Branson. All right. Caleb Branson. She said the hatchet cover. Yes, that was it. Yes. It was the leather sheath. Oh my gosh. Everybody is getting this correct. There's not a single All right. person. But, but nobody has done how, how we found that. So that's the second part. That's the second part for uh, uh secondary prize. 
Oh, so Kaylee everybody said, start. so so Kayla wins the two tickets. Yeah, let's Kayla throw wins out the two secondary seconds. thing. Let's throw out some helium 10 swag for the person that answers how we found that. Yes, helium 10 and swag. It looks we'll like a gift basket. It looks like Bahara found it. Or also uh Luis. Did you see Luis's? No, but Bahara says the monthly club, that's the subscription box. Yep, I think Luis might have been first. I'm Look looking up. for Luis. He was even specific. Go up. It was. Oh my gosh! It's flying in so fast. I can't even keep. I up. told you that's what would Luis. happen. All right, so Luis gets the swag, and who was it that got the Kayla? Is that who he said? Yeah. No. Oh, who won? Kayla was the one who won the uh, tickets. I think that's who he said. Right? It's already disappeared. I'll have to go back and check it because I already forgot the winner's name is All the right. woman. I'll remember when I see it. So, so uh, yeah, so we, we will um, we will contact you or just email. Uh, I think it's social at helium10.com. I think that's Cassandra's. Hey. Oh, it's Kayla. 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 Hey, Kearney. So Kearney said, can I wear the private label Legion Mohawk on the next episode? Hold on. I got you. Where did Tim go? I don't know what's going on. Oh, look at that. There we go. Yeah, asking you it looks like see. exactly like your logo. I mean, like identical. Dude, it's almost like we planned this or something. Almost like you planned it. What's going on? <laughs> I don't have anything cool here at my office I can put on my head. So <laughs> I, have, I have like a a, 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 a a cover, a cover for my or a, a cleaner for my <laughs> for my awful. window. <laughs> All right, Kayla. Uh, anyways. Kayla, send me a message on Facebook. You can find me, and I'll hook you up with those tickets. And Louise, and then Louise track down Bradley for the yeah, Healing 10 flag. Uh, uh, slide into our DMs on <laughs> Facebook Messenger and ask for Cassandra and say that you won the, the gift basket of Helium 10 shirt and some other Helium 10 swag. It's not just going to be a shirt. Don't worry. We'll give you some like pens and a whole bunch of cool stuff. All right, guys. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Make sure to tune in. Turn, hit like, hit subscribe, hit the notification so you know when the live premiere is going to be of episode seven, uh, which will be Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That is what? That's 12, one, two o'clock Eastern Time. Make sure to tune in uh, so you can watch that. We'll be, or at least I will be live, uh, live uh, chatting with you guys as we watch the episode. Until then, this is Bradley Sutton and. Timo Jordan or Project X. <laughs>